Welcome back everybody. Today I'm back with two shaker bottles. This is the ice shaker which was featured on a Shark Tank. This is the blender bottle which is the number one best seller on Amazon with an insane number of ratings and one third the cost. Which one is better? Let's find out in today's video. Let's first go back to the unboxing and see how that went. All right, let's take a look at the ice shaker here. I paid $35.99 for the 26 ounce model. It's a 26 ounce shaker bottle, sweat proof, double wall vacuum insulated. The leak proof top stays secure while shaking. Just add the agitator and blend with ease. They say it can hold ice for up to 30 hours in a 75 degree room. The twisting agitator breaks up powders easily and works as a filter or even an infuser. They say it's silent when you shake it. A lot of people on Amazon praise the design features over regular shaker bottles. Some say it cleans easily and stays cold for hours. Now some people on Amazon who don't like it, they say the 30 hour claim might be kind of a stretch. A few people complained about the lid being difficult to clean. All right, this is how the blender bottle arrived from Amazon. Let's crack it open. All right, I paid $10.99 for the 28 ounce model. Currently the number one bestseller in this category with almost 90,000 ratings on Amazon. All right, so here we go, three pieces here. Now the claims are that the wire whisk is made of surgical grade stainless steel. They say it has a wide mouth and a leak proof lid. Now most people on Amazon say it works well and the whiskey mold does a great job of breaking up protein. Several people said they like how the rounded bottom prevents the mixture from collecting around the corners. Now there's not a lot of cons for the number of reviews out there, but a few people had issues with the lid closing properly. Let's see what these weigh now. Let's try first up the ice shaker. That is going to be 11.6 ounces. Blender bottle, much lighter, 3.65 ounces. It's time for the first test here. I've got some protein powder. I'm going to try it out. Now this protein powder says two scoops for 14 to 16 ounces. On first observation, I will say that you can see the level on the outside of the blender bottle. You can just, you can kind of see it. The ice shaker, you actually have to look inside and it's not quite as easy to see in there. I can't quite make that out sometimes. But let's try a couple scoops and see what happens. Two scoops. It looks pretty full already. So let's uh, get these closed up and start shaking. Blender ball ball is going in there. Hopefully it'll sink down to the bottom. Maybe I should have put that in first. Ice shaker cap is going on. All right, these are both sealed up. I'm gonna try 20 shakes and hopefully we'll see what happens from there. If I need to go more or less, we'll make adjustments next time. After 10, I'm switching hands. All right, let's see what we got. That was only 20 shakes, it wasn't a lot. I'm going to put this strainer here and see if I can see how much of the protein powder did not get dissolved. Blender bottle first. All right, so that, there we go. That is the blender bottle. That's how much did not get broken up with 20 shakes. Let's try the ice shaker next. Here we go. Oh, a big chunk. All right, it's pretty close. The ice shaker has one larger chunk than the uh, blender bottle did, but I think it's pretty, pretty even actually uh, overall. I, I don't think there was a huge difference. I, mean, I guess maybe the blender bottle got a, a slight bit better, but not a huge difference. All right, I've got 14 ounces in here once again, and this time I'm gonna add some ice. I'm gonna do kind of a loudness test. I've got four large ice cubes in each one. Let's put some more protein powder in here. Now this time I'm not worried as much about how much it breaks up as how loud they are. So let me, I'm just gonna keep shaking these and see which one I think is the loudest. Here we go. Kinda feels like a bartender making multiple drinks here. All right, well, as far as that goes, the ice shaker is clearly quieter. Check this out. Much quieter. Ice shaker, blender bottle. Ice shaker, blender bottle. I haven't actually drank from these yet. Let me try that out. Ice shaker first. I must admit, I kind of like this opening here. It's almost like ergonomic to your lips. Your lips kind of go on here and it almost feels like a straw. It's, I, I kind of like it. I've never drank from a mouthpiece like that before. I actually kind of like it. Next up, blender bottle. 
All right, so the, both of them are perfectly acceptable, but as far as which one feels better to drink out of, I gotta give it to the ice shaker. And the ice shaker is quieter, although the strain test, I think the blender bottle won by just a hair, so it's pretty close here. Both of these, after multiple shakes, are, are perfectly blended. I don't, there's no chunks whatsoever. I shook them a lot more for the ice test and the strain test, but they're perfectly well blended. I don't think, think there's much of a difference, to be honest. Next up, I'm gonna try the leak test. I'm gonna turn these upside down and leave them there for a while and make sure that there's no, no leaks so I'll make sure the lids are on tight lids are on tight I'll come back maybe in an hour and uh, see how these look interestingly the blender bottle sits upside down pretty well it's kind of interesting the the ice shaker not not as well not that it's really important not, not that that's a design feature most people look for but if you're looking for a design feature where one could be stored upside down the blender bottle will win that one. I'll come back in an hour and check on these. All right, at the one hour mark, they are not leaking. So I'm pretty impressed with both of these. I've got some ideas of which one I think might be the best, but let me try a few more things before I offer my final conclusion. All right, it's time for the ice shaker 30 hour test. Now here's how they say the 30 hour test goes. They leave it in a room that's 75 degrees, full of ice with the lid off for 30 hours. And supposedly there's ice in there. And there's kind of an implication that other bottles would not pass this test. So let's try it with both of them and see how it goes. Right there, it's completely full. 14 ice cubes in each one. It's 9 a.m. right now. I'm gonna come back tomorrow at 3 p.m. and check on them and see how they both look. All right, so last night I checked it at about the 12 hour mark and the blender bottle ice was already melted at 12 hours and the ice shaker was still there, but somewhat melted. I'm at 24 hours right now and it looks like uh, the ice shaker may make it to 30 hours, but it's gonna be close, check it out. A little bit of ice left, not much. And of course the blender bottle still melted, but it might make it to 30 hours. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is an accurate claim. So I'll check back in six hours and see how it held up. By the way, I did leave the studio lights off so it didn't keep it warm. So it is 75 degrees in here and it was mostly in the dark the whole time. Here we go, the 30 hour mark. Let's see who we got. And there's a tiny bit of ice left, so it actually did work. It, you know, 30 hour challenge, if, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to expect, but the fact there's any ice at all means as far as I'm concerned, it did pass the test. All right, so to wrap this thing up, I've been using both these for about a week, alternating which one I take to the gym with me, and I have some final observations. As far as blending goes, which is probably the most important feature, I would say they're about equal. Even though the blender bottle did a tiny bit better on the one test I did here over a week, I don't really notice much difference between the two of them. Now, as far as keeping them cold goes, the ice shaker is clearly better in that respect. So if that's important to you, the ice shaker wins that category. Another category where the ice shaker wins is how quiet it is when you shake them. It might not be important to some people, but it is a much quieter experience. A couple categories where they're equal, I would say, is cleaning. The blender bottle has that whisk. The ice shaker has the agitator. They're both about the same as far as cleaning goes. I don't think there's a much of an advantage to either one of them. I would also say they're both kind of leak proof, so I didn't really see much advantage to either one in that department. Now, as far as the drinking experience goes, I prefer drinking out of the ice shaker than the blender bottle. They're both perfectly fine, but this one just feels like it contours my mouth a lot better than the blender bottle does. Another advantage the ice shaker has is it doesn't really sweat compared to the blender bottle. When I was doing my 30 hour ice test, I checked on them about 10 hours later the ice shaker was not sweating but the blender bottle was and the final category to consider is the price and that's the one where the blender bottle comes out way on top 10 to 11 bucks versus 36 certainly much cheaper all of this one's got all the bells and whistles so when i first started this video i thought the ice shaker was just going to be an overpriced version of this but it really isn't it's got more features than the blender bottle does and it's it performed as well or better in all the categories that i tried so for those reasons i picked the ice shaker as the better of the two bottles now the blender bottle is perfectly acceptable if you're just looking for a bare bones shaker bottle it will certainly perform well but if you want the bells and whistles the ice shaker is the one to go with but if you've tried the ice shaker or the blender bottle tell us what you think in the comments below i appreciate you watching and i'll see you next time for those of you who stuck around i got a few bonus questions and answers so let's jump right to it first up water off a duck which is a great name by the way Wants to know if I ever leave written reviews, especially on Amazon, because she says that if she finds them valuable, especially those photos attached to them. Now, I occasionally will review things on Amazon, but I find that my reviews are kind of get buried. So most of my reviews, I actually have a written counterpart on my website, freakingreviews.com. I include photos there. And if there's any updated information, like if I continue to use it and something broke or anything changes, I'll update the written articles. So I find that that's more effective than getting buried on Amazon. Dad Rock wants to know if I'd consider doing a video about my favorite products in the history of the channel. 
which has gotten the most use and which were great bargains. Now I kind of have a video planned that I, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to happen or not, but what I'm hoping to do in that video is go back to the first year I was on YouTube and discuss the products that I still use, which is a pretty small list out of the 150 products I did that first year. Keep an eye out for that and hopefully it happens. I'm not totally convinced that video is going to turn out very well, but if it does, it should be soon. Ace of Spades wants to know what the oldest product that I own and still use. Not necessarily one I've reviewed, but just in, in general I bought and used. The oldest product that I bought and I still use to this day, I'll have to go home and pull it out and show you a close-up of it. It is, you might be surprised about this, it's actually a magnifying glass called the Coin Loop. I, I bought it back in 1980 when I was about 12 years old and I was big into coin collecting and I still use it. We were building the puzzle recently and I was using it for that. So it's probably the oldest product that I, that I bought many years ago that I still use. And I will say, I'm sure that whatever I paid for it, I got my money's worth. This person wants to know what item took the longest amount of time to get shipped to me. Now, besides wish.com, which is notorious for slow shipping, there was a product last year that I ordered. It was a countertop oven, kind of like the Tavala and the Brava called the Suvi. I ordered that back in April. It didn't arrive until August. And by the time it arrived, they had a new version out. I contacted the company. I said, I don't want version two because version three just came out. And they basically wanted to charge me extra for that. So I said, forget it, just take the thing back. I'm not reviewing it after all. So I would say that's the most recent example that comes to mind. Derek wants to know if I've had any thoughts on doing as seen on TV commercials. You know, if there was a product that I liked, I would be up for it just to say I did it, just to be part of that whole uh, history of that. Uh, but I, I've, I've talked to these as seen on TV companies over the years. I don't think they're interested in me. So, oh well. RJP Trucking wants to know if I've ever been contacted by product makers for improvement ideas. Uh, I, I'd say yes and no. I, the Blendjet people did contact me. They saw my first review. They made improvements and they made a much better product. I'm not going to take credit for that, but I do think that maybe I helped a little bit in the process. Most inventors are so enamored with their ideas that they think their inventions are perfect and they can't handle any criticism whatsoever. And a lot of the big companies, I'm not saying all of them, but some of the big companies seem to care more about a good sales pitch than a good product, and they don't really seem to care as much if the products aren't perfect. So the only people that ever really seem to contact me for improvements would be small to mid-sized companies, but not single inventors. This person wants to know if I've met any other YouTubers that are in Vegas. Now, one of my best friends is the Vegas Low Roller. So if you've ever seen his channel, he's a very good friend of mine. In fact, a couple of his most recent videos, I filmed for him. I was a cameraman for him that day. Uh, Justin the Fabricator, he's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, I met Sean Cannell a couple times. I don't think he probably remembers me. Uh, CJ So Cool used to live right down the street here, but um, he, he moved away and I've never met him either. Uh, there's, I know there's other YouTubers in town that I've never met. Uh, maybe maybe one day, but I don't really get out of the house much. I'm usually at home filming, so. But th uh, that's all I got for this Q&A. Uh, I appreciate you sticking around for this bonus section and I'll see you next time.